Hello everyone, myself Ankur Patel and today in this uh, fourth session of projection of solid we will continue our practice with problems of projection of solid. In the last session we have discussed an example of pentagonal pyramid and in today's session we are going to discuss an example of hexagonal pyramid but we will explain the different case. So let's start with the example. So the given content regarding the example is a hexagonal pyramid side of base 30 mm axis 60 mm long has one of its slant edge on HP and inclined at an angle of 45 degree to the vertical plane draw its projection so here in this problem the object given is hexagonal pyramid or the solid given is the hexagonal pyramid with basis length 30 mm axis 60 mm long and the condition with horizontal plane and vertical plane both are given that means one of the slant edge on HP and incline at an angle of 45 degree to the vertical plane so this example is going to be done in three different stages okay now if you want to derive the first stage first of all we have to find out the resting condition that means if the solid is resting on HP or on VP and then after we have to assume some suitable conditions to derive the first stage so here in this example you can see that the pyramid has one of its slant edge on HP so we can say that it is it is going to rest on the horizontal plane and if it is resting on HP we have to assume that if, if we want to derive the first stage we have to assume that the base is parallel to the horizontal plane perpendicular to the vertical plane and X is parallel to VP perpendicular to the horizontal plane so first of all draw the xy reference line and here we are going to use the first angle projection method so we will get the top view below the xy reference line front view above the xy reference line now here uh, the hexagonal pyramid is resting on hp so to derive the first stage we have to assume that the base is parallel to hp perpendicular to vp and x is parallel to vp perpendicular to the horizontal plane so by assuming this condition we will draw the top view and front view so we will start with the top view and uh, top view will be the hexagon because it is the hexagonal pyramid the top view will be the hexagon so first of all draw the hexagon having side length 30 mm and this will be the top view of its base having base corners a b c d e f now we have to draw the top view of the slant edges and if you want to draw the top view of the slant edges we have to connect the opposite corners of the hexagon so a d b e c f so connect the opposite corners and we will get the top view of the slant edges and this center point will give us the top view of the apex point now we have to draw the front view and to draw the front view we have to project all this point towards the xy reference line now first of all we will draw the top view of the base so if you want to draw the top view of the base we have to project the top view of the or we have to project the base corner toward the xy reference line so project so this will be a dash b dash f dash c dash e dash and this will be d dash and this will be the front view of the base as we have assumed that base is parallel to hp perpendicular to vp front view of the base will be a line now project the axis from the center over here project the axis like this and the axis height is 60 mm so measure 60 mm from the xy reference line and draw the axis so here we will get the front view of the apex point o dash now if you want to draw the front view of the slant edges what we have to do we have to connect the base corner that means a dash b dash f dash c dash e dash and d dash to the apex point so connect these points uh, base uh, points of the base to the apex point we will get the front view of the slant edges so this will be the front view and it is a triangle now we have to derive the second stage and in the second stage we will take the condition with the horizontal plane because the pyramid is resting on the horizontal plane in the second stage we have to derive the condition with the horizontal plane and here the condition is given has one of its slant edge on the horizontal plane so now if you want to take the slant edge on the horizontal plane 
we have to take the slantage on the xy reference line from the front view of the pyramid and we can take the true length of the slant edge from the front view and here we can see that the slant edge o dash a dash and o dash, o dash d dash will give us the true length because the plan of that slant edge is that is o a and o d are parallel to the x y reference line and if o a and o d is parallel to the x y reference line we can say that it is parallel to the vertical plane and if the slant edges are parallel to the vertical plane the front view of that slant edges will, will give us the true length so now we can take the slant edge o a or o d on the x y reference line so we will take slant edge o d on the x y reference line like this now we have to copy this figure over here so if you want to copy this figure over here what we have to do we have to measure a dash from d dash by using the rounder so take the rounder measure d dash to a dash take center at d dash over here and give an arc like this now measure o, o dash to a dash and by taking center at o dash give an arc over here so here we will get a dash connect a dash to t dash and a dash to o dash now we have to mark this point f dash b dash point of the axis and e dash c dash so for that what we have to do we have to measure this distances from a dash so measure a dash to c dash e dash or b dash f dash and the center and mark these points over here so first of all measure a dash to e dash c dash from by taking center at a dash mark point over here measure a dash to the center taking center at a dash give an arc over here measure a dash to f dash b dash taking center at a dash give an arc over here connect these points like this this will be the axis this will be b dash f dash c dash e dash so here we have copied this figure in the second stage by taking one of the slant edge on the x y reference line that means now we can say that the slant edge o dash d dash is on h p now now we will draw the top view so if you want to draw the top view first of all uh, draw the locus from the top view in the first stage so this will be the locus of fe locus of a d and apex point o and this will be the locus of b and c now draw the projectors from this point a dash b dash f dash c dash c dash and d dash and o dash also so draw the projections like this here we will get a1 here we will get b1 f1 here we will get c1 e1 and here we will get d1 and also take the projector of apex point like this so here at, at this intersection point we will get o1 now whenever the pyramid is lying on one of the slantage on hp in this type of cases whenever the pyramid is lying on its slantage or lying on its triangular face in this type of cases in the top view the base is going to be visible so here we can see that the observer is going to observe the figure from this direction and in this type of cases the base is going to be visible or you can see that the points of the base are rotated 180 degree clockwise or anti-clockwise so you can see that in the first figure a is over here t is over here and in the second figure a is rotated like this so base is going to this base is going to be visible in the second stage so draw the base first of all a1 b1 b1 c1 c1 d1 d1 e1 e1 f1 because it is going to be visible and you can see that the base is nearer to the observer so base is going to be visible now we have to draw the slant edges in the top view and to draw the slant edges in the top view we have to apply the rule of intersection of the edges that means we can say that two visible line will never intersect and two hidden lines will never intersect so here the edges of the base are already visible so we will draw the slant edges accordingly so connect o1 a1 it is going to be visible because we doesn't have any intersects intersecting visible line in between o1 and a1 o1 b1 is also going to be visible because we doesn't have any visible outline intersecting o1 b1 now you can see that o1 c1 is going to be hidden because the uh, base edge a1 b1 is intersecting the edge o1 c1 so it is going to be hidden 
O and D1 is also going to be hidden. But the part in between O1 to A1 of the slant edge O1 D1 is going to be overlapped by the slant edge O1 A1. That why in this portion it is not going to be visible. The hidden line of the slant edge OD is not going to be visible in between O1 and A1. Now O1 A1 is going to be hidden because it is intersecting the base edge A1 F1. And O1 F1 is going to be visible. So this is our final top view. Now we have to derive the third stage. And for the third stage we are going to take the condition with the vertical plane. And here it is given that has one of its slant edge on HP and incline at 45 degree to the vertical plane. So the slant edge which is on HP makes an angle of 45 degree to the vertical plane. So here we can see that the slant edge OD is on the HP. So we have to take O1 D1 or we have to incline O1 D1 at an angle of 45 degree to the xy reference line. If you want to make the slant edge inclined at an angle of 45 degree to the vertical plane, we have to make that slant edge inclined at an angle of 45 degree to the xy reference line. So first of all draw a line inclined at an angle of 45 degree to the xy reference line. Now mark O1 and D1 measuring it from this top view in the second stage O1. Now measure O1 to D1 on the rounder and mark D1 over here. Okay, given by giving the R. So take the rounder, measure O1, D1, taking center at O1, give an arc over here, here we will get D1. Now measure O1, A1, O1 to A1, it is on the same line and uh, give an arc over here, so here we will get A1. Now we have to mark the E1, C1, B1 and F1. For that what we have to do, we have to measure E1, we have to measure E1 from D1. So you can see that D1 E1 length, D1 C1 length, A1 B1 length and A1 F1 length are the same. So first of all measure D1 E1 by using the rounder. Okay, take this length on the rounder by taking center at D1, give an arc on both sides like this. Now take center at A1 over here and give an arc on both sides like this. Now measure E1 from A1 or F1 from D1. These lengths are same. So measure A1 to E1 and by taking center at A1 give an arc over here. So here we will get sorry. Now measure D1 F1 or A1 E1 and by taking center at D1 give an arc over here like this. So here we will get the intersection and by taking center at A1 give an arc over here. So we will get the intersection over here. So this will be our base and it is visible in the, this figure. So we are going to copy this figure over here by taking the slant edge incline at an angle of 45 degree. So here we will get A1, here we will get B1, C1, D1, E1, F1. Now copy this figure over here in which the hidden line is going to be hidden and visible line is going to be visible. Now we will draw the front view in the last stage by uh, taking the direction of the observer in this particular direction. So if you want to draw the front view, first of all we have to take the draw the locus and take the projections. So first of all draw the locus from the second uh, front view in the second stage. So this will be locus of A dash, this will be locus of B dash F dash, this will be locus of C dash E dash and X y line will be the locus of D and O. Now draw the projections from this figure. So from A1 draw the projection, here we will get A1 dash, here we will get B1 dash, here we will get C1 dash, D1 dash, E1 dash and F1 dash and finally we will project the O also. So here we will get O1 dash. Now here you can see that the base is nearer to the observer. So in the last example also we have discussed that this case if the base is nearer to the observer in the front view base is going to be visible. So connect the base base is going to be visible by the visible outline. So connect A1, B1, B1, C1, C1, D1, D1, E1, E1, F1 and F1, A1. So the base is going to be visible. So we have drawn this base by the visible outlines. 
now we will draw the slant edges by applying the case or by applying the rule of intersection of the visible outline and the hidden outlines that means two visible line will never intersect and two hidden line will never intersect so now connect o1 dash to a1 dash it is going to be hidden because this line is intersecting the base is base edge over here okay and base edge is going to be visible o1 b1 is going to be visible because you can see that we doesn't have any visible outline in between o1 and b1 o1 c1 is going to be visible o1 d1 will be visible o1 e1 will be hidden because it is intersecting c1 d1 over here and o1 f1 is going to be hidden because o1 f1 is also intersecting the visible outline of the base edge at c1 b1 so this is the final front view and top view of the hexagonal pyramid which have this slant edge on hp and incline at angle of 45 degree to the vertical plane so this is it for today thank you for watching see you in the next lecture till then take care Thank you.